Well, welcome to Pajama Preaching for Monday, the 25th of January. It's actually Sunday evening and Joey's just gone to bed because it's about 20 past seven. And so I thought I'd do the uh, study today. We're looking at uh, Mark's Gospel, chapter 12, verses 38 to 40. What do you really see when you look at your so-called religious leaders, he continued. People who love their status and all the plaudits it brings them. How they love to parade in all their fine clothes, breathing in people's admiration, expecting people to bow and scrape to them. They make sure that they're always seen in the right places and expect the best seats. But it's all a charade. Behind the scenes, their lives are crooked and hypocritical. One moment, they'll deprive a widow of her home, thinking they can uh, make up for it next with one of their flowery prayers, which goes on and on. They may think themselves fine and dandy. They may even get away with it here on earth. But when they come face to face with God, there'll be a heavy reckoning. And so there's a few things that Barclays picked up on. It speaks about devouring widows' houses. And he says this is a savage charge. Josephus, who himself was a Pharisee, says of certain times of intrigue in Jewish history that the Pharisees valued themselves highly upon their exact skill in the law of their fathers and made men believe that they, the Pharisees, were highly favoured by God <coughs> and that... They inveigled certain women into their schemes and plottings. The idea behind this seems to be this. An expert in the law could take no pay for his teaching. He was supposed to have a trade by which he earned his daily bread. But these legal experts had managed to convey to the people that there was no higher duty and privilege than to support a rabbi in comfort. That, in fact... Such support would undoubtedly entitle him or her who gave it to such a high place. They will get a high place in the heavenly academy. It's a sad fact that religious charlatans have always preyed upon vulnerable people and it will seem that these scribes and Pharisees imposed on people who could ill afford to support them. The long prayers of the scribes and Pharisees were notorious. It's been said that the prayers were not so much offered to God as offered to other people. They were offered in such place, in such a way, that no one could fail to see how pious those who offered them were. The passage as stern as Jesus ever spoke warns against three things. Number one, it warns against the desire for prominence. It's still true that many accept the office in church because they think they've earned it, rather than through any desire to render selfless service to the house of the people of God. Office in the church may still be regarded by some as a privilege rather than a responsibility. And don't forget this is Barclay writing some while ago. Is it still the same today? It warns against a desire for defence. Almost everyone likes to be treated with respect. And yet a basic fact of Christianity is that it ought to produce the desire to obliterate self rather than exalt it. There's a story of a monk in the old days, a very holy man, who was sent to take up the office as an abbot in a monastery. He looked so humble a person that when he arrived, he was sent to work in the kitchen washing the dishes because no one recognised him. Without a word of protest, with no attempt to take his position, he went and washed the dis dishes and did the most menial tasks. It was only when the bishop arrived, some considerable time later, that the mistake was discovered and the humble monk took up his true position. Those who enter upon office for the respect which will be given to them have begun in the wrong way, and cannot, unless they change, ever be in any sense the servants of Christ and of their neighbours. And finally, number three, it warns against the attempt to make a traffic of religion. It is still possible to use religious connections for self-gain and self-advancement, but this is a warning to all who are in the church for what they can get out of it and not for what they can put in. We all should be transparent for Jesus.
Yes, all the fine robes, all the pomp and circumstance of some churches. And yet, God loves simplicity. God loves everyone. And a hymn came to mind when I was thinking about this, and I've guarded a bit what I say about the church, because the church has got long traditions, strong history, but maybe with COVID there are things to change. This hymn source says it all, written by Charlotte Elliott. And for those who like dates of birth and death, she was born in 1789 and died in 1871, and I'll let you work out the maths. Just as I am without one plea, but that the blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as I am, and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot, to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, fightings within and fears without, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as I am, poor wretched blind, slight riches, healing of the mind, Yea, all I need in thee to find, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as I am, thou wilt receive, wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve, because thy promise I believe, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. And now as a prayer, close your eyes, let's pray. Just as I am, thy love unknown, hath broken every barrier down, now to be thine, yea, thine alone. O Lamb of God, I come, I come. And say after me, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Amen. Blessed be you today. Amen.